Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So today in this video, I'm going to show you my full process, drawing and coloring and painting this set of still life in the kitchen. So here I have a vintage tea or coffee pot with three oranges and a bunch of bananas. So I don't use a pencil to do a preliminary sketch. I draw directly with an ink pen. So here I'm using an extra small brush tip pen, Etcher brand. So I'm kind of visualizing the size and placement of everything with hand gestures. And now I'm ready to start drawing this orange in the foreground. It's not being covered by other objects. So when drawing a set of still life, I like to draw the object in the very foreground not being covered. And now I'm adding this orange behind the first one. And the third orange overlapping behind. Adding the stem and adding a few dots to show the pores on the surface. Okay, so now I'm seeing, I'm kind of uh, measuring the distance between the bunch of bananas and these oranges. There's a very small gap between these two things. So here I'm starting to draw the tail of the two bananas and the third one on top, paying attention to the uh, overlapping relationships and the size of the curves of each banana. So if you're not sure, you can always start drawing with a pencil first and then trace over. Um, you don't have to start drawing with a pen directly. And slowly moving on to the stem, the banana here and another stem and the curve around. So color the tip black because the tip of the banana is usually um, very dark. Same as the, uh, the bottom tips. Okay, hey, and now I am drawing very lightly the ridges on the surface of the banana, just making it look even more three-dimensional. There is the uh, drawing part of the banana. Add a little bit of hatching lines, accentuation around the bottom. Okay, I think now I'm ready to draw the glass jar. This is the uh, left hand side, the bottom mainly covered by the banana. This is the middle, the belt is metallic. The thickness line. And the top line of the uh, metal belt. Moving up and drawing the opening, the pouring thing. And the right hand side. And here's the round lid, the button on the lid. And just adding these lines to suggest thickness and three dimension. These are very small shapes, but they're still important. Okay, and just adding these lines to suggest the thickness of the container. And now I'm ready to draw the handle it's kind of like a U-shaped curve, upside down. Okay, and adding some more broken lines around this part to suggest the thickness of the glass. So for me, I like to use a lot of short and long broken lines inside the shape of glass vessels because in this way, I'm trying to show the, uh, the shine of glass better and the bottom upper curve. Add a few more broken lines and the measuring marks. And another ring around the bottom. Some more broken lines here and there, trying to show the shine of glass. Okay, and now I'm adding the thickness lines of the handle. These lines are pretty important 
to give even more three-dimensional feel to the handle. Okay, and the drawing part is finished. Okay, so today I'm gonna try something new for my art journal. So these are Inktense watercolor pencils made by Derwent. So there are 12 colors in it. It's a very um, minimalistic set of colors, but these colors are very useful for sketching almost anything. Okay, so first of all, I'm grabbing this color. It's called Sun Yellow. It's very similar to Lemon Yellow. And just simply spread it all over the surface of the banana, but leaving some parts white because I want to show the bright side of the banana on top. And, and now I'm using this color. It's called Tangerine or Orange and just use very relaxing, loose pencil marks to color. It doesn't matter uh, what kind of hatching lines that you make using watercolor pencils because these lines are gonna be dissolved by water anyway. So don't worry about the uh, exact details that you make with watercolor pencils. And putting on some sun yellow on top so this is the color that I feel is more of a yellow orange. So for watercolor pencils or colored pencils, you can always overlap more than one colors on top to create your own unique colors. Okay, as you can see, I left some bright spots on top of those oranges to show highlights. And now I am choosing another color. I'm trying to um, color the glass pot. Okay, so I just grabbed the color called deep indigo or deep blue. So now it looks black because the color is going to change a lot after um, I put water on top to dissolve. So I'm just using very simple vertical lines. And as you, as you can see, I'm leaving some streaks of highlights, especially around the middle. I'm not putting a lot of color in the middle because the middle part is very bright. Okay, and now I wanna draw the line of the uh, countertop just to give this whole set even more dimension and keep adding more hatching lines using this deep indigo color. Same for the uh, metallic belt over here. I think it's much easier to control a colored pencil compared to using watercolors. Just using different pressures. The more pressure that I put, the darker the color is. So it's pretty straightforward. But the hardest part is always about observation skills. It's like how you translate what you see into um, different areas of light and dark and using different pressures. Okay, so now I'm grabbing a new color. Is a type of green, I think it's called teal green because I wanna give a turquoise tone for this glass jar. A lot of glass vessels, they have a very light turquoise tone if you look very carefully. So now I'm kinda like putting this teal green on top of the dark blue. Pressing pretty hard around those super dark areas, as I see. Okay, so here comes the exciting part. So now I'm using my large tipped Hobain water brush, just simply squeezing the brush a little bit. And as you can see, now the colors are dissolving. All of the pencil marks are pretty much disappeared and the colors are much more vibrant and thick than before. So this is the, uh, the nice quality about in Inktense watercolor pencils. The colors are very vibrant. And same as these bananas. And use my water brush the same way for, the, uh, for this glass jar. 
and so as I add water, I'm also observing the jar in front of me, just making sure I don't blend in too much color or towards the middle. I'm keeping those highlight spots around the middle and those stripes. I really like this um, blue-green tone that I created. It gives more life to this glass jar. Okay, so now I'm grabbing this color. It's called bark or dark brown, the color of tree barks. So just kind of testing it a little bit around the corner and just using these very simple hatching lines for the countertop. So when we're sketching, we don't have to um, use the exact same colors that we see in real life. We can always spice it up by using a different color or even more um, vibrant color. So this is the color of bark after I put water on top. And I really like saving a little bit of these hatching lines to give an organic feel. So this is one of the uh, nice things about watercolor pencils is that we don't have to stir too much um, to totally dissolve all of those hatching lines. I like to save that those hatching lines. Okay, so now my Etcher watercolor palette is back. I want to add some shade colors. So as you can see, I'm using some leftover um, blue purple mixed with orange. So to get a shade color for orange, simply mix in the complementary color, which is purple. So as you can see, the light source comes from mainly the uh, right hand side. So the left hand side of these oranges are pretty dark. So as you can see, I'm using curvy brush strokes to suggest the invisible curviness of these spherical shapes and a little bit of shadow. Another layer just to darken the shade color. Okay, so now I'm grabbing some leftover blue because the complementary color of yellow is blue. Just to add around the bottom of these bananas just to give these bananas more three dimension. And then by keeping observing, I can see that I can add a little bit more contrast around the ridges of these bananas by adding another layer of darker blue, blue purple is fine too. Just a bit here and there dark around the inner gap. I think that's it. And I'm not going to over add too much shade color for these bananas because I want to keep them clean. Just a few dashes being very careful here and there. Okay, so that's it for the bananas. Now I want to add a few more final polish for this glass container. So again, I'm using my leftover colors mix of ultramarine blue and purple to add a bit more tone around both sides of this jar, but not the middle. The middle part is pretty shiny. Just a bit more sharp contrast here and there, mostly around the edges. Just make this metallic stripe um, have an even more smooth transition. Some more finer lines, smooth blendings here and there. Just a bit. As you can see, I'm not adding too much because uh, this is pretty much done. But I still want some final polish, like um, some more contrast in teeny tiny details, not in large areas. 
Okay, I think I'm done polishing these objects and now I'm ready to add the shadows. Again, using the leftover color of a mix of ultramarine blue and purple. Just add the shadows on the bottom of each object. And I'm adding more paint pigment and less water to add a more intense shade color around the bottoms of these objects. I want a really nice sharp contrast between the edges. The shadows are very important to make objects stand out from a painting. So I'd like to spend a little bit more time on it. And here is the look of the finished sketch. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And I will see you very soon next time. Have a great day.